very good afternoon, everybody. So we are from Big Data Department. And since we have two topics, allow me to quickly introduce them to see how they relate to each other. So first, Dan will explain about how we collect and analyze user behavior uh, data. And then Yamashita-san and myself will introduce a concrete use case of how we use data to have a personalized user experience on Lakuta and Ichiba. So we hope you enjoy those presentations. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dan. Uh, today we're going to uh, talk about Rakuten, Rakuten Analytics Rock. Short, uh, uh, Rat in short. So what is Rat? So Rat is a active stream collection uh, system, uh, which is uh, implemented in uh, Rakuten services. So it collects information from mobile and web application, and these data are being used for doing behavior analytics for our customer, or just similar with the topics earlier, doing data-driven studies by data scientists, improving our advertisement tracking, and doing some service uh, level reporting and analysis, and it's also used to how to better utilize our data. So what kind of data are exactly we are collecting? So as we can see here, so every user actions are being collected, so from visiting the site from our mobile browser or from our PC, those page views, any clicks or any tap that we do, so any user actions being done or collected, so even scroll and hovering some objects in the websites are also being emitted with some events which goes through our system. So imagine all the active users doing those things in the applications and it's going to be emitted all day and all year round. So we need a system to access those and process those data. So I'm going to show you the data pipeline we have implemented. So first is to track from the tracking. So we implemented those tracking modules on the websites and then mobile applications. And we use a lot of uh, technologies carefully selected to perform those requirements. So for example, when we receive those data, we use a very lightweight HTTP server, which is light TPD, and going through the, our streaming uh, section, which we use a large stash to feed those data in Kafka. And we also use Spark uh, Streaming and Flink, combining the strengths to, to provide the requirements for our streaming uh, use cases and I'm using Spark and Bargay for batch, and finally, on how user access to this, those data. From web application we provided, we use not one, but a number of query engines to, to have those uh, web interactivity latency. So doing this pipeline in Rakuten, we strive to push our limit and to improve our system day by day. So what are those challenges we are looking into on a daily basis? So first, Dealing transient burst mode periods, low latency query over big data, multiple channels. So these three are very important, equally important on our customers, meaning the customers on other teams from Rockdale. So we talk about dealing with transient burst modes. So this one is very is being experienced when we have these events in Rockdale, like a shopping marathon, a super sale, or even holidays, which make people to buy or use our services. So with this one, we are going to deal with a lot of traffic, very different from regular traffics that we are experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. So for example, so from this chart, we have this yellow lines which depicts the normal traffic and the red one which shows a very big difference on the regular trend that we are experiencing. So with this one, we have over 200% difference on the regular traffic. So this is a very big challenge to us, and maybe on almost data pipeline builders around the world. So because we need to project the traffic not only with the regular one, but also with the sudden spike caused by new, new events or new application being introduced. So because if we don't do that, we might have a delays in processing or data loss. 
The next up is low latency query over big data. Since we have a lot of data in our system, we need to make those available to users, not using a very typical a long, run, long running job. Since in, in RAT we offer our tool to have a web access, so we combine the technologies, Druid, Elasticsearch, Presto, and Parquet to provide those use cases. So since this tracking system is implemented across Rockland ecosystem, we have a lot of services, various use cases, and it's over a year worth of data, more than a year, a thousand dimensions and metrics because other services have different needs, other information, and we also support user-defined queries. So as you can see, we combine the strengths of multiple query engines, build a query layer, a query application on top of it to maximize those uh, features of those engines. And then lastly, supporting multiple channels on accessing data. Because it's not only on the web UI where we can, we can access the data on the on RAT. So we also offer other departments, other engineering teams to leverage readily used data on the pipe, pipeline. For example, in Kafka, so if we wanted to have the real-time use cases, they can all already access it. If they have some batch or some data discovery uh, requirements, they can also use it from batch. So here, as I'm saying, so we don't only have a data analytics platform, but also intend to have a technology innovation foundation for each engineering teams and also data scientist teams to leverage the data we have in RAP. So specifically focusing on Kafka and, and the batch components, not on the UI and ready available in SQL, we have these use cases wherein RAT is being used. Example so search, recommend, personalize, and campaign. So my, from next, my next colleague, which we're going to talk about the campaign use cases, which they also leverage the use of RAT data. And I wrap my, uh, my topic by saying thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dan. As, uh, for next, uh, we'd like to introduce our uh, one example of the data utilization. So we believe our data should be for customers, for making customers happy. As, uh, let me explain about the case of the Lactin Superpoint. As a as user, I'd like to see things that fit my willing and needs. The thing is, how to do that? Sorry. Uh, this is the result of such. I'd like to have the nice backpack, and then and there is the same items, but different prices and reward. I'm price and reward conscious, so I selected the highest one. And then the, check the detail. This small screen can explain the, all of the reward. As a, all of them are based on the, your attribution and the status and your past behavior. For example, uh, this is actually my screen, I'm a Lactin mobile customer, so I can get extra two point. And also this item is, comes from the Lactin version, so as a, I can get the extra reward from the past purchase. So I made the, almost the 80,000 Japanese yen on October. And the last thing, at the bottom of the line, as I explained, you've not registered one campaign. How about register this campaign and get the extra uh, reward? It's this end. So everything is for you, for maximizing your reward. It makes sense from customer point of view, doesn't it? And uh, how much diversity do we need to have to realizing this personalization? Let me explain with numbers for better understanding. The first candidate is the user, the most important part. So we have the 12 million unique purchasers per month with 40 million uh, orders. This number is uh, almost the same as the population in Tokyo. We need to understand the user behavior deeply and reflect th their status change in real time. And another candidate is items. 
we have two six four million items. So all of the items have the different price and uh, tax calculation. This kind of thing. This number is almost a double of Japan population. So last one is campaign. So there are five million campaign are uh, there the between the customer and the items. So last question is how to calculate. I can say it very simply, just multiply all of them, and then respond it at once in 15 milliseconds. The combination, the number of combinations is this thing, hmm, but it's okay. And I just forget to tell you, the result of search is not only one item, there is up to 45 items. But I can say it's still easy, just do it 45 times at once, and then the respond in 15 milliseconds. Let's do it, our engineers. That's it. But sorry, I'm telling a lie. It's a very, very difficult challenge because we need to calculate and respond in, uh, in real time, but also the, with the highest accuracy, right? The point itself is a kind of the money. But in simultaneously, also we need to be flexible because campaign has, a, has a tons of combinations. From here, our technical architecture, Mr. Olivier, as an stripe guy, will explain our challenges. <laughs> Thank you, Yamashita-san. So, hello again. Um, so let me explain about how we did that since we released that system last year. So first, I would like to introduce three concepts that are important to understand, I believe, for the rest of the presentation. So we have data on the left hand side as yamashita san explained we need to understand who the users are and what they do with our lakuten ecosystem then we have the computation which is how we define campaign rules that would tie a specific user behavior to a benefit and the result would be a personalized display of how much benefit the user would get if he were to buy this item so to look into more detail Basically, we have on the data side uh, user attributes. So user attribute would be, for example, the membership rank, whether I'm platinum or diamond user. But also we need to understand all the interactions that the user has with the Rakuten ecosystem. So we have a large ecosystem with purchase data, subscriptions to Rakuten Mobile or to a Rakuten credit card and so on. Then when it comes to campaign rules, I listed there uh, three of the major Ichiba campaigns, which is Super Point Up program. This program is about, uh, depending on how much you use the Rakuten ecosystem, you get more points when you purchase on Ichiba. Then we have two other big campaigns, which are Supercell and Marathon, that are more Ichiba driven and mainly depend on what you buy on Ichiba. And the result is basically a unique um, view for a user, so the, a specific user looking at a specific item at a specific time. And every time it's different. Because the item would be different, the user would have different attributes, and depending on the time, different campaigns will be running. To get a sense of complexity of the engineering problem we had to solve is on the data side, we were looking at 500 user state changes per second. So in our case, the data size is not really the problem. The problem and the challenge is how dynamic the data is. Because every time a user state change, we need to recalculate everything we know about that user. Then the computation, so Yamashita-san said, and I would not dare pronounce this number in English because I don't know. So we have a very large number of possible combinations. And finally, on the result side, since we are exposed a little bit everywhere on Ichiba, we are serving about 30,000 requests every second. Then when we started this project, uh, we had three main goals. On the data side, we wanted to be real-time because we believe that drives customer satisfaction. And we want when our customers make some interaction on the Rakuten ecosystem to allow them to see the result of those interactions in real-time. Then the computation should be flexible because we want to uh, empower our business to come up with crazy ideas for campaigns. So if we were to decide that for tomorrow, we would give huge benefit for people buying striped shirts on Lakuten Ichiba, we should be able to do that easily by just changing some configuration. And finally, on the results side, we have to be accurate 
um, because benefits yeah, as well as points, this is money, and we cannot really be very fuzzy about money. Then order three in themselves, we can talk for, for a very long time, and I don't have a very long time, so I just pick one that I, I felt was the most challenging for us to achieve, which is flexibility. So you might wonder why is that difficult? Well, first, uh, about flexibility, since we need to get data from many parts of the Rakuten ecosystem, we, need to come up, we needed to come up with a way to represent data that we could bound to company groups. And the data is as diverse, I put some examples there, but we have to know that the customer has a Rakuten card, for example, or a Rakuten mobile subscription from this month, but maybe he will cancel next month. Or last month, he bought 3,000 yen worth of goods on Ichiba and he used seven coupons to do that. Or he used Lakuten Travel and he booked a hotel in three months. So how we, we needed to find a way to really have an abstract way of representing data. Then when it comes to campaign rules, um, we needed to come up with our own way of expressing um, what a campaign definition is. And I can um, really <laughs> I uh, guarantee that that created a lot of debates within the team, like how abstract, and we had very, for days, passionate discussions about how we should represent a campaign, what should be the conditions, and we came up with something that works, maybe it's not perfect, but we are quite happy with the result. And the last um, challenge regarding flexibility is that with the numbers I was talking about before, Flexibility, well, the end customer doesn't really see it much. What the end customer sees is the result, and the result has to be fast. But flexibility brings complexity. And so we had to do a lot of iterations to make our system optimized enough so that we could reach our target of 15 milliseconds to reply for a request from a customer. So we launched last year. Um, now our systems will never be finished and we still have many things we want to do so I listed three things that we are currently working on. Um, the first one is the configuration of campaigns I was uh, presenting earlier. It's maybe good enough but we still haven't found a way to expose that to our business users. We would like to empower our, our business to be able to create the campaigns they want but we haven't been able to reach that yet. Then the second one is how we can integrate our solution in different parts of uh, the Rakuten systems. And the last one is uh, more one from my side, but I like to see the result of my work. So we were thinking how we could have something fun to have visualization the user states. For example, at the beginning of Supercell, I find the idea very interesting to see dynamically what the users are doing in an anonymous way. So that's the things that we'll be doing uh, for the next year or two, I believe, before we find other ideas or things to do. So this is my last slide, but before I conclude, I would just like to say that uh, we, Yamasha san and I just represent a quite significant team, so I would like to thank all of them for their hard work on this project. And finally, thank all of you for your time and listening to us, hoping that you had a good time. Thank you very much.